from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who just took a fisherman's friend to reduce mouth noises, and that's, well, now I'm not hearing them anymore. Uh, that's like a cough drop. Oh, there's a mouth noise. Don't worry, you won't hear any more the rest of the episode. This is why I warm up, uh, and you may be confused, and the, 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 like, so am I. Because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast with very little mouth noises, except at this particular moment that I'm leaving in. You may not even hear them, but that's how much I care. Uh, it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And these sponsors are how I'm able to be here for you for free choice week. So remember that when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots. I was just wondering, we're doing a big push for our Patreon right now. We've lost a lot of patrons because there's so much stuff going on. Uh, and uh, what's hurdles for regular people is also a hurdle for the podcast. So if you're in a financial position where you could support the podcast you listen to for free, I realize it's a wild, wild idea to pay for a free podcast. But those that percentage, small percentage of people that pay for the free podcast, they keep it free for everybody. So if you can afford to support the show at five, ten, twenty dollars a month or support it annually. You like listen to the show a lot. You say, wait a second, I listen to Sleep With Me more than I listen to my music subscription service, more than I listen to or watch these two streaming services. Please consider like pausing one of those memberships and supporting the podcast because your help, it's huge. It, it enables me to do what I do night after night after night, put all the work, uh, my heart and my soul into the show. So please consider supporting the show if you can. And if you can't, don't worry. There are people out there, and I, I don't know the statistics. The last time I looked, it was like one patron provides about a thousand downloads a month uh, for other people. So your support could help a thousand, two thousand other people fall asleep every single month. So it, whatever it is, it's a huge help. If you're in a position to do so, maybe think about pausing one of those subscription services you don't use every single month. Uh, if you use Sleep With Me every single night, multiple times a week, multiple times a night, please consider support in the show. It'd be a huge help. There's tons of cool bonus content and stuff like that. We're about to launch our Discord community. So there's tons of other reasons to get into it. But in the end, a lot of people choose to support the show because it's there for them. And it feels good to know you're supporting it for you and a ton of other people. Uh, at least that's what I hear from all the other patrons. So please consider it sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash P-A-T-R-O-N. Thanks. All right everybody it is time to talk about tonight's sponsor helix sleep i've been traveling a lot lately and i don't even know how many odes i've written to my helix dusk lux but usually i'm writing the odes in a hotel room or in a guest room at somebody's house where i'm tossing and turning more than normal because the mattress is lumpy it's too firm it's too soft it's way too hot it's just not comfortable because it's not a mattress made for me and what i need helix sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete matches your body type and sleep preferences to the mattress for you right like just like i'm saying why would you buy a mattress made for someone else or why would you sleep on one every single night with helix you're getting a mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep everybody's unique they have several different mattress models to choose from soft medium firm mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot even a helix plus mattress for plus size sleepers like i said i took the quiz i got matched with the dusk lux because i sleep hot i sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. It's a perfect mattress for me. So I wonder what the perfect mattress for you is. All you do is you take the quiz, you order the mattress you're matched to, and it comes right to your door shipped for free. No going to the mattress store ever again. Helix is awesome, but you don't have to take my word for it. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors. And sleep medicine is a go-to solution for improving sleep. So just go to helixsleep.com slash sleep, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customer mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They even have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. And Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody.
All right, everybody. It is time for the sleepy supporter zone, the most part, poor, 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 important part of the podcast. Uh, so I get so excited. And yes, it's faster. It's more paced than the rest of the show because it's how we're able to bring you the show for free twice a week are the listeners who support the sponsors and then go one step beyond that, letting the sponsors know they supported them because they support Sleep With Me. It's huge. That's really how the show is free on every podcast app. And oh boy, do we have some people to thank. I want to thank Swoops, and I want to thank Gwendolyn. Both Swoops and Gwendolyn supported Relief Band. Let Relief Band know about it. Got the relief. Got the relief from Relief Band. So thank you, Swoops. Thank you, Gwendolyn. If you support a sponsor, tag them, tag me. Let them know about it. Give them a call. Send them an email. Send them a letter. And let me know about it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. So I can thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone like Swoops and Gwendolyn. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. Right now, if you're in need of extra support, there's links to resources in the show notes you could connect with right now. It's about supporting our communities with our actions, saying Black Lives Matter, saying stop AAPI hate, saying support Ukraine. So there are links to places you can connect with to learn more and to take action right in our show notes. It's also about taking action to support the communities we're a part of beyond that. And one of the organizations I support is the Midnight Mission, offering a path to self-sufficiency for people experiencing homelessness. We're trying to supply them with hygiene kits. You can be a part of, be a part of our community. Join me. We're doing live streams. We're doing a lot of fun stuff together. You can get a free download of a live show. You can get free streams of our live shows and you can take a part of, you can feel good about being a part of the community, hanging out with other listeners and supporting other people. And you could do that for free. It's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. The link is in the show notes go ahead and use it oh mystery bard a lot of people help out on the show who are they this posty poster song sounds like an earful wrote the theme song edits episodes too. carl w the legend also edits episodes ashley too. kenny scotty jennifer runner, 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 runner. eric and the team let us down they're on the website i am the mystery bard i do the lullabies yeah i do commissions at jonathan man See the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance Rusty Biscuit, Lois, Anna, like banana. Leah does the transcripts. Thanks, Mr. Bard. Don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter. You'll get free live streams. Uh, you can download a live show. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. Join me. We're going to have a good time and we're going to help other people. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. Thanks, everybody. And let's get on with the show. Uh, hey, everybody. It's Scoots here. This is a repeat episode uh, that uh, came out a while ago. One of my favorite uh series or like occasional uh, things more i think they call them morally and morally eventually they would this is uh, either the first or the second episode we ever did i don't even know right now uh, because i'm still trying to find uh, uncompressed audio of the first episode but uh, like i do have uncompressed so this is probably the second ep- or second episode because uh, more realistically i'm not going to find that uh, uncompressed ep- audio of the first episode that just means that better quality but I even found the original files of the second episode. So, yeah, this is a, a, a look back at Derek Borley and uh, Morley Safer uh, do, doing stuff together. I don't even know what to say. Like, I, I literally, uh, uh, they go to Kmart a lot and deal with stuff like Blue Light. But I don't know about this episode. And one of my favorite people uh, that uh, is ever, who I've ever imaginarily seen in an event uh then imagined in reality without the podcast. I thought I saw Morley Safer at a performance of my dad's musical community theater performance of MAME. And I said, is that Morley Safer over there? This is like, uh, I don't know, six years ago, seven years ago. And then, in, like, I was still paying attention to the musical, but I was also imagining uh, that Morley Safer and I became best friends and went on adventures together. 
And yeah, we, I'm aware, like, uh, Morley, so hopefully, Morley, maybe you're listening now to the podcast uh, or checking it out. Uh, maybe you're with your friend Derek, because uh, my name is Drew and Scooter. But uh, one of my favorite, like, small, ongoing jokes. Uh, yeah, so this one goes out to Morley Safer and uh, everybody else out there. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble falling asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's been keeping you up at night. Whatever's got you tossing and turning. Whether it's thoughts, feelings, uh, sensations, emotions, noise, whatever is keeping you from crossing over that threshold, I'm going to try to distract you from that. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send my voice here across the deep dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing tones, pointless meanders, similes, something like and as a simile and a metaphor. And it's with, you know, with not really paradox. I don't think I'm capable of paradox. You know, definitely no paradox is at bedtime. I'll get right into the senseless metaphors here. Because uh, this be- bedtime podcast, this podcast is meant to take your mind off that kind of stuff that runs through your head. Also, and that is a paradox, uh, actually, when you lie down and either you're exhausted or they call it overtired. Who, who they, pardon my language, who came up with that term? Probably a brain bot, without a doubt. Uh, overtired. It's just, a fr- it should be just freaking tired, you know. Or if you're uh, Battlestar, fracking tired. Or, you know, but, but, what was I saying? I got, hey, sorry, I got a little fired up there. But, you, you know, with the paradox, I guess I was talking about is you lie down. And either you did all this work to get ready to go to sleep or you're just beat or you've been looking forward to it. And then all of a sudden, all these creatures, like, you know, creatures are stirring. What was that without a match? How's that Christmas thing go? All the creatures were stirring. Oh, not a creature was stirring. But in your mind, all of a sudden, the creatures were stirring. Uh, Just like a bunch of freaking annoying mouses, you know. And don't object, mouses. I'm just using you in, in a, in a, you know, whatever that sense is. I, I overused the word metaphor already, so I can't say that. Uh, so don't get bent. But, um, you know, all of a sudden you say, geez, I, I wasn't thinking about anything. And I thought it was pretty calm and stuff. And now I climb into bed and it's like this, uh, I, don't, I don't know, this term, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys have this, Fireman Field Day. But it's like a field day, you know, for your, for your thoughts, your worries, your concerns, your pains, your past hurts, your present hurts, your future hurts, fear, all those things start running through your brain. And paradoxically, you're trying to quiet stuff down. And the more you try, the more you try to control stuff, you know, the harder it is. And I use the term fireman field day. And I don't know, they, they, those things, I guess they disappeared, at least in, in Syracuse, New York, where I grew up. Uh, in the unincorporated areas, like the do, like on the, I lived right in the edge of the city, up against the county, the county line, the unincorporated part of the county. And in order to raise money, or one of the ways they raised money for the volunteer fire department was to have a fireman's field day. It's kind of like a carnival or a county fair. It would have a few rides. It would have uh, food, and it would have a tent. And actually, it was the first, I was thinking about it because, you know, lately I've been lucky enough to have some attention on the podcast. And I was thinking about Bobby Finger. Also, Bobby Finger has a new podcast out. Uh, so make sure to check that out. But um, Bobby Finger was the first person that interviewed me about this podcast. But it was like, was that the first interview I've ever done in my life? And I don't know if this counts as an interview. It doesn't. Not even talking about it. But I was at the Fireman's Field Day. And someone from the news would come, the local news. And this guy's name, I think his name was Denny. And he, he was, I don't know if he did the weather or the traffic, but he was, you know, the kind of you know, the, the goofy guy in the news. 
He was also on a morning show for kids called Saturday Morning Showbo. Uh, you know, that was kind of like a kids variety show. But this guy, Denny, well, that's what we'll say his name is. He would he came to the thing, you know, and you say, hey, well, this is the guy from the news. Said, and he had a mannequin. And I forget the mannequin's name. And I, I, he, I don't know what he talked about. Maybe the what it's like being a weather, what it's like working on the news. But, he, you know, he did a little routine with his mannequin, you know. And that was always cool for kids to see people that could throw their voice or ventriloquist, ventriloquist dummy, I guess it was, not a mannequin. Oh, boy, a mannequin. Yeah, I, I thought I was using it. Man, that would have been better. Maybe that's what he had at home was a mannequin. There's probably a 95% chance that. Sorry, Danny. But, uh, you know, I wish I had a mannequin to love. Believe me. Oh, wow. This went way off the rails. But uh, so he did his little show with his, his ventriloquist dummy, not his mannequin. That was probably for after midnight. Uh, but he, 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 then they took, they said, any kids want to come up and tell a joke? And usually I was terrified of everything and avoided it. But I said, well, geez, I'll, I'll come up and tell a joke. And then I went up and told this joke, which is, I've told before on the show, wasn't my own joke. But I said, what is the mom, when they, I, I don't know the setup exactly, but I said, mama, but mama, a ghost and a baby ghost get in a car to go to the, the store. What does a mama ghost to say to the baby ghost before they leave? Fasten your sheet belt. And I think I got a signed picture of Denny and um, eventually was dummy. Probably, I don't know what his name was. It was usually, I don't know, we prefer a two-syllable word or a three-syllable word for a dummy. Dummy. Yeah, I guess Freddy the dummy. Fred the dummy. Hey, Freddy's not a very good name, though. I guess so. Usually with a high, you know, Petey, that's a good, that would be a good one. Eh, maybe not. So where was I? So the podcast is meant to take your mind off stuff, distract you. That was just a little sampler of what I do on the show is kind of go off on a little tangent. I thought I was going to talk about paradoxes, but quickly part of my brain said, you don't know what a paradox is. Change the subjects. And I said, thanks. I will. Wait, what did you say? I was going to talk about something else. I forgot what we were talking about anyway. And then I'll kind of go off. But I, I, I'm not positive here. But I'm, 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 sometimes I'm fairly confident. I mean, if the podcast is going to work for you, is that while I was go, talking about Denny in the Fireman's Field days and the ghosts in a car, which is kind of a joke. It's like, where are the ghosts going? That should have been the joke. What, they're changing haunting locations? What are they going to the store for? I see. Like that, so this that could be a podcast episode. Uh, maybe. Maybe that should be a podcast episode. The ghosts that went to the store. Maybe that'll be tonight's episode. Yeah, I think it will be. I guess we're tr- going to trend our trending Twitter Tuesday that right now. But, uh, like, I think there's a chance why I was doing all that, that you weren't thinking about all the other stuff that might have been keeping you up at night. That's ideally what happened. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. You're under no obligation to listen to me. Just lie back, kind of let yourself be distracted. The story will kind of, it's kind of like a, like a, I guess like at the Fireman's Field Days, they had the super slide, which if you're not a kid, there's nothing super about it. But super ripoff, I guess, as a parent now, I say, you still see those from time to time at like a street fair. But when you're a kid, you're like, that thing is awesome. How many times can you go on? And it's a once, it's $5. Uh, but like the super slide, you're, the podcast kind of works in the same way, but, but you're like, you're going... Like you're going to kind of be engaged, but then you're going to keep going and keep going. And then when you get to the bottom, ideally, you'll be asleep uh, instead of being like, well, that's it. I guess that would be it. Like my story will be like the super slide. I'll go whoop, whoop, whoosh. And then ideally you go whoosh in a dreamland instead of being like, I just paid. And a kid would just be like, can I go again? That was great. And that's what your brain bots will do through the rest of the story, ideally. All the parts that are keeping you up, they'll be listening to me. 
uh, you'll you'll wash right off. You'll be like, because you, you, you're not paying anything for this podcast, and you know you don't have any commitment to me, and I'm not going to charge your brain bots to go on it five more times while you sleep. So yeah, it's whoosh, whoosh, could go so it has with three, you get on that burlap sack and you go up and, oh man, I can't, now I'm getting immersed because it was like, oh, you'd be in a, it'd be a late summer day and you'd be at the top of that super slide tower and twilight would be mix, mixing with the sunset. I ruined that uh, by saying mix, minxing, but I guess that could be a term, you know, they, they kind of are getting minxy with the sunset and the twilight and you're standing up there and you feel you really feel alive the kid and then you go whoosh 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 and ideally you keep going into the twilight across the deep dark night i'll be here talking to you for the next 45 minutes to an hour uh, trying to, to, to just listen and follow my ridiculous train of thoughts instead of yours. You know, that's the offering. You know, just listen to me. And whenever you feel like checking out, whenever you feel like drifting off, go right ahead. All right, so I'm glad you this podcast doesn't work for everybody. I hope it works for you. And I really appreciate you trying it out and stopping by because I know it takes a lot of, I know there's a lot of crap out there. And this, this, you know, 60% of people say, this is something that, that word does not do. But so, uh, so I don't have any expectation or demands of you. You know, I hope it works for you. And if it doesn't, I hope you, I really do hope you find something that does. And I'm glad you're here. So thanks for stopping by. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. If you tried the Name Your Price tool yet, it works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody. It is time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Headspace. And I love uh, my time with Headspace uh, because my mind is always running, sprinting for years on end, leaving a trail of stress, anxiety, and fatigue. Like it's slowly eroding my ability to be in the present and the quality of my mental health. So if you're not in a long with me, right? You say, yeah, that's how I feel all day long. Uh, yeah, that's how I feel too. But now I have tools to deal with that. And one of the tools I use and one of the easiest ways to learn how to do it is is to learn through Headspace. In fact, a recent study proved in just two weeks, Headspace can reduce your stress by 14%. So whether you want to relieve stress and anxiety, sleep better, or improve your focus, Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness for real life. And for me, a lot of times I'll use Headspace uh, twice in one day, uh, like in the morning and in the evening. And in the evening, I'm usually used, taking a Headspace course with my daughter, Sophia. But I like to kick my day off with today's meditation uh, because it's different every single day. It's always powerful, but it gives me something to look forward to, a way to start my day out with something positive to keep me mindful throughout the day. So check it out. Uh, check out uh, today's meditation today uh, at Headspace, and you can do it for free. So it gets even better. You can check out today's meditation right now. Uh, however you're feeling, try Headspace at headspace.com slash sleep with me and get one month free of their entire mindfulness library. This is the best Headspace offer available. So go to headspace.com slash sleep with me today. That's headspace.com slash sleep with me. Get over there. Try it out. This is a free offer that will change your life. Uh, do not wait. Get over to headspace dot com slash sleep with me. Thanks, everybody. Hey, right, it's uh, trending Twitter Tuesday, it's Saturday, uh, about five thirty, just before five thirty p.m. So I got the uh, uh, tw uh, tw uh, Twitter app open. Let's see the number one. Uh, what's trending in Milwaukee? I like how we can really nail this down. So. 
And tonight's episode was born out of the opening about a uh, story that came out of this joke. It, well, I guess it is an investigation I did. As an investigation I did about, uh, you know, a ghost, uh, two ghosts, well, a ghost parent and a baby ghost in a car. Anyway, I had to get my sleuthing on because, uh, oh, by the way, it's uh, February 27th, just for the record, because, you know, since I'm sleuthing, I want to be sure. 528, February 27th p.m. reporting. And, you know, when I get my sleuthing cap on, when I, you know, when I get into my uh, reporter mode, amateur, you know, definitely su- super under amateur. I, I pitch that to Under Armour, but they, you know, well, they wouldn't, I don't know if they opened the email, but they said, what about a new line, Under under Amateur? And they said, well, it's a brain bot. One of my brain bots, pre pitch, my pre pitch brain bot said, well, what do you mean? What's well, under amateur? And I said, well, that's why I stood in front of the mirror brain bot. Look right there, under amateur. And then the brain bot said, well, you got me on that, but why would you need a specialized underclothing? And he said, come on, of course, because it's special. We want to feel special just like everybody else, just because we're an under amateur. It doesn't mean we have, you know, we have a right, like all people, to feel special every once in a while. And then that brain I said, okay, you got me again. So, uh, but when I get on my sleuthing hat and then I put on my under amateur underwear, a.k.a. adult underoos that I special ordered, don't ask what superhero I mean, I would say, you know, co- I, would say, I thought you were going to talk about two ghosts in a car, Scoops. Well, yeah, just let me finish this out, okay, self-critic. You know, I feel down enough about buying these underoos. And I special ordered them. You know, somebody in Brooklyn, you know, would they make some hand paint some. So I guess you shouldn't have sent that letter to, oh, that makes more sense and why they're $80. But, well, I sent that to the Underoos headquarters, so, well, great. And I signed it, Scooter, Sleep With Me podcast, because I thought that'll get some results. Uh, but, I, I, you know, again, I don't want to uh, harp on G.I. Joe and how much I dislike G.I. Joe, because I love the show, and I guess I'm obsessed with it, but I guess G.I. Joe was really, and never mind, I don't want to get into throwing around. So, anyway, not important. You know, you live and you learn. I don't know what, I guess I wish I knew the life lesson there. But, but as I was talking about in the uh, intro, once upon a time, little Andy, their little buddy, little Andy, you know, the kid, the kid that, and this was, you know, pre, uh, this was when I still had some freshness to me because I told that little joke with Danny and his ventriloquist dummy and so I, I think I say, say, you know, and I think this, but this was probably right around the time I had trouble sleeping, but I told this joke, you know, what does the mama go say to the baby ghost when they get in the car to go somewhere? Fasten your sheep belt. And, you know, I was repeating this conversation to set it up on the phone with Morley Safer, because that's where I was trying to go with, to set up is that, uh, you know, if I'm going to do any investigative reporting, it's going to be, you know, it's going to involve Morley because he's my hero. And I, I want him to learn my name. For some reason, if you're new to the show, a couple of times I've roped Morley Safer. Or some critics of the show will say a man that looks like Morley Safer, whose name's also Morley. That's not Morley Safer into some adventures with me. When when I was in Florida last, it was just a year ago, actually. I guess this is a good time. I need to take a little bit of a walk down old Nostalgia Road. I was at a performance of MAME, a musical, M-A-M-E, that my father was performing in. As uh, I forget his name, but MAME's uh, adopted uh, son. I almost had it. I don't think it was Matthew, but it was something like that. Um... But I was sitting there, and I, did, I think this was the second performance I'd been to of my father and Mame. And this, it was a wonderful, the woman that played Mame was uh, spectacular. And this was at the retirement village, and this was when my mom was sick last year. So 
It was a little bit stressful time, so it was a nice escape. But I was looking around the room, scanning all these people, being, you know, suspending their disbelief and watching this performance and, you know, just feeling the stories in the room, to be honest with you. And I locked eyes with the man. And then he looked back to the stage and I said, that's morally safer. And I said that, you know, my heart started pitter-pattering, you know, with a uh, investigative journalism crush, I guess would be the right term. And then I roped morally and I said, well, you know, I, I wanted to start a team. I said morally and morally, morally and gorally. And I, then I got involved with morally and I, I thought we were on a case about water or something. And then ended up, it was just trying to, his brother was trying to break up with somebody. And they had an incredibly irritating dog. And I helped, but more, I think at some point, you know, instead of calling me Scoop or Scooter or Drew, uh, Morley must have got some bad information and thought my name was Derek. And I still don't know why. Even his wife, every and the, so. And then we had a couple other. We we stopped. Believe it or not, the Plutonians, you know, tried to wreck the Earth and stuff. Uh, but we got involved in saving the Earth. I mean, basically. I mean, I, it was mostly morally, but still morally. Thought my name was Derek after that, and he even sent me. Tried. He said, Derek, I want you to come. Meet. You know, he tried to set me up on blind dates even. And I'll be honest, you know, I'll put it out there. It was crushing. And a lot of people will say, isn't it enough to be adventuring with Morley Safer, one of your heroes, and save, you know, saving the, the entire planet Earth and enabling Morley's brother to break up with his girlfriend conflict-free? And... uh and knowing, you know, this 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 icon of American journalism, what's the point here? Yeah, the point is it's not good enough. Saving the world, helping morally save for a break, brother break up with his girlfriend. Yeah, that's great. But there's part of me, one, that wants to be, I guess the amateur journalism part, it's more I want to be on adventures with morally safer on a first name basis. You know, the adventures are great. And I guess as I learn more on this journey of self-discovery I'm on, I say, well, geez, there's just a need inside of me uh, to have more than an adventure with Morley Safer. And I guess, you, yeah, we could go on analyzing it forever. Well, he, he, he didn't he say that he wanted to set you up on a date with one of his nieces. And doesn't that say a lot about your relationship with him? But yeah, he but he just knows me as Derek, so it doesn't like. And I don't know. I I don't think he's messing with me. And he's I know he has all of his faculties, so it's not that. Uh, so yeah, it's not good enough. Uh, I'm sorry. And I said, well, what about this ghost? Two ghosts in a car. So I called him. I said, I said morally. And of course, he said, Derek. Oh, oh. He called to his wife, whose name I'll leave out. You know, I don't want to, she's not a public figure. He said, it's Derek's on the phone. And she said, she got on. Oh, Derek, how are you? We miss you. I said, okay, when are you coming to Florida? How are you, you know, the whole, and I said, yeah. and that's what I did. I said, oh, I'm great. So, and then they said, oh, Derek, you're so, you know, and I said, you know, because they didn't even know my personality. They know I'm a bit of a loon. So anyway, it was time to pitch Morley on this story. I said, excuse me, can you, can you put Morley back in? And he said, well, what about this? Are you still single? You, and then they both laughed at that. But I think Derek's a little bit more, maybe that's why they call him. And so I said, geez, do I, I said, okay, I got to, I guess I got to. And I said, maybe, there, maybe I'm trying to go at this the wrong way. Maybe I need to embrace Derek. And get to get this. So I said, yeah, get, this is Derek. Can you put Morley back on? I got a case. Uh, so Morley hopped down. I said, Derek, what is it? I said, Morley, we got a, we got a case. We got a go, ghost case. And I said, Morley, Morley, did you hear me? We got a case. 
And he said, yeah, I think he goes, I must have missed it. And I said, no, 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 morally. We, 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 I said, we got, it. okay. Uh, and then, you know, I'll skip over this part because it took about four months. But, uh, uh, you know, of, of logistics and, you know, fitting in when Morley does the, the touring schedules. And then saying, Derek, you know, Derek, uh, and then I just I had to buy a ticket to Florida. Which I said, well, I said, well, I guess somebody. And then I said, wait, it's a ghost. I said, yeah, a ghost. I said, we could meet anywhere. We should have just done it on Skype. But anyway, got to Florida. I met up with Morley at a coffee shop. And I just kept telling myself, you know, own the future, Scoots. You're, Der- you're Derek now. And I said, well, Scooter, is you- maybe I am. And I said, Der- I'm Derek. No more Will- Willie, 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 whatever, mixing up Willie, nil- you know, Willie washing or whatever. We- oh, that sounds definitely no Willie Why? And I said, M- Morley stood up as I walked into the, he said, Derek. And I said, morally and Borley, back on the case. And I said, I guess I'm Derek Borley. Private. Well, I guess we're not private and get, but, you know, amateur. Well, Morley's a pro. Morley and Borley, investigative journal, journalist and sidekick. And he said, all right, tell, tell me what's going on, Derek. And I said, okay, Morley, let me take you back. So I'll skip that part because I already took you guys back. And then we, I ordered some coffee. Then I had too much coffee. As they told Morley about uh, the uh, the whole thing, and Morley even laughed at the joke because you know Derek Derek Borley is one hell of a a sidekick, uh, which troubles me. You know, could I do? I need to become? He said, "Am I a character investigative reporter?" He said, "What kind of investigative reporting do you do?" And I say. Uh, yeah, I'm a method investigative reporter, Derek Morley, method investigations. He said, well, if Morley, I guess I'll do that if Morley doesn't. Morley said, Derek, are you with me? And he said, I'm just worried about the case, Morley. He said, did you get all that? And he said, he patted me on the sh- shoulder, like, you know, in a fatherly way. And he said, okay, Derek, so you, you were looking for two ghosts in a car. And he said, Kai, I guess, yeah, we're looking for ghosts, uh, a cartoon ghost, you know, mother and a child. Not sure if it's a, it's a girl or a boy, to be honest. You know, ghosts are kind of a bit androgynous. The ones, these ones in my brain that I was picturing, you know, the ones from the joke. And Morley's already had out his steno pad and was writing. And he said, do you think this is related to the Plutonians? And I said, I don't, to be honest, Morley, because this was pre-Plutonian. I said, he said, okay, Derek, to walk me through, what are, we, what are we looking for? And I said, well, we got, there's a lot of questions on this case, more, Morley, because he, he gave me, he looked up, like, with his, uh, you know, his signature safer look. And he said, please complete my name. Well, that's what his eyes on my, my face told me. And I said, well, there's a couple questions on this case, Morley. One, whoa, whoa. I said, first of all, the car, you know, I don't know. That's confusing, but I don't know if that's in worthy of investigation. I said, just where are the ghosts going? I was under the impression, you know, that ghosts didn't travel. And if they did, you know, it wasn't casually. Morley said, okay, he's writing this down. Yeah, I think he was making bullet points. And then, then the waitress looked over, came I saw over, right, never and Trump, she said, I heard, and I she goes, you guys, you guys here for the pack in town for the Pac-Man tournament? And then the waitress came over, and she said, I heard, you guys, you guys here for the pack in town for the Pac-Man? And I said, no, no, no. And then she said, are you in town for the Ghostbusters reboot, uh, uh, reboot shoot? And I said, no, but, uh, we could... He said, that's, that's a coin. They said, morally, we're definitely in the right place. He said, it's coalescing, Derek. And I said, yeah, we got to get it. I guess we got to get on this. And he said, where do you want to start? And I said, uh, I, don't, I don't know. And I said, ma'am, where is this? Uh, 
where's the uh, t- 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 tournament, the t- t- Pac-Man tournament? She she said it was it, it's it's on the, the set of the Ghostbusters, of course. And I said, well, I thought they already shot that movie. I mean, shot that movie, ma'am. And she said, well, they're doing reshoots. I said, well, Morley was writing this down too. And I said, wow, this is really going well because usually I mess, you know, when, I, when I'm not being, when I'm being myself, but Morley thinks I'm Derek. I say, he doesn't let me take the lead. And she said, what are you talking about? And I said, meh. I said, Morley, don't write that down. That was just a blip, you know, blip. I said, well, I said, where's the set? And she said, it's a rebuilding of, uh, and I said, Columbia. And she said, no, Marquette. And I said, okay, Milwaukee, Milwaukee school. And she said, yeah. She, she, and I, she, I said, can you point us to it? I said, uh, I said, so they were their teachers at Columbia. And she said, what do I look like, Doris Hollywood to you? And I said, you don't happen to be a ghost, do you? And she said, no. And I said, all right, well, I said, well, morally and morally on the case, ma'am. Rest easy. Here's two bits for your time. I said, morally, like, could, could you give her a couple bits? And he slipped her a five. And I had like three more cups of coffee. Uh, but, but, it, but it, I'd realize that, you know, when Morley, we, me and Morley, Morley told them only bring me decaf. So then I just had to make a couple extra stops when we tried to drive to the set of the movie. And Morley said, what's our next move? And I said, well, I don't know, Morley, because we could sneak on the set and cause havoc. But I said, I don't want to do that because I like everybody involved in that project. And I love Ghostbusters. And I said, we've, I said, you know, I said, uh, there's a, another quinky dink. And he said, what, it, he goes, please don't, D- Derek, that's not a professional quinky dink. And I said, there's another piece of synergy here, Morley. And he wrote that down and then crossed it out, which I took, it took to be like a form of constructive criticism, subtle form of constructive, you know, the kind Morley does to Derek is near equal. And I said, I believe that they're also shooting Fuller House, the uh, Netflix remake of Full House here. And I was like, you want to talk about a place full of ghosts? And he said, I said, there's some. And he said, let's go. He goes, the house is the perfect place to start. And the next thing you know, Morley's in full uh, invest, you know, full like 60 minutes. You know, he calls Lowell. Uh, Mr. You know, I, go, I have to call him Mr. Bergman. Maybe if I talk to Morley about him, he won't take, you know, he won't uh, directly correspond with me. But I think that's before he met, you know, actually, you know, this is a tangent here, but everybody's using this. This is, you know, when I, I always try to figure out these pop terms. So I've been trying to pick it, figure out soft power. The other one is peak something, like I hear. And so then I was thinking, well, maybe I'll be peak Derek uh, Borley. And next thing I know, we pull up to the Fuller House set, which was in a full house, like a house. And we're talking to a key grip. Did I say that? Or we started talking to a key grip, but Morley was on it full 60 minutes. I think before I got on the tangents, that's sort of what we were at. And the key to grip starts telling us about all these cartoon hijinks. And I said, with Kimmy? And then he just stared. And I said, well, maybe Kimmy's not all she's cracked up to be as an adult. And I said, no spoilers, by the way. Key grip and Morley wrote a double underline, no spoilers. And then Morley said, you know, he goes, tell us more about these hijinks. And the key grip says, unexplainable. He goes, unexplainable hilarity in the set of Fuller House. And I said, are you being ironic? And he said, he said, who, who, who are you asking? And then Morley, when he goes, I'm, he goes, I'm asking. And he goes, the key grip got all, uh, he sat back, he leaned back in his seat. If he had a cigarette, he would have lit it and smoked it. And he said, I tell you who you want to talk to. You want to talk to old man Vandy. And we said, old man Vandy. 
And that was so good, Morley didn't even need to write it down. He said, oh, where's old man Vandy? He said, down the way. He said, down the way where? And he said, the Anaheim room. And I said, the Anaheim room here in the Fuller House, uh, Full, Fuller House house. And he said, yeah. And they said, well, where? He said, the base. That's what we call the basement, the Anaheim room. And I, I said, well, why do you call it the Anaheim room? And he said, it's for crew only. And it's a place to wait away from all this Fuller House stuff. So it's like Disneyland. Because once we're away from all this. And I said, wow. That's cool. They said, I wish I, and, and we, well, I said, let's go, Derek. Uh, so we go down to the basement and the, the crew was coming up from a break. And uh, Morley says, uh, Derek, he goes, let's, let's, let's uh, follow my lead. And he goes, excuse me, gents, this is me. He goes, I'm Morley. This is Derek Morley. He goes, we're wondering what you heard about some hijinks around these parts. And Morley was talking uh, one a tenth of a decibel louder than normal, barely detectable by human ears. Unless you're a sidekick, future partner Derek Morley, and you can pick up on these kind of things, you know, because you're, you're you know, method, method investigating. And Morley said, I just got a couple of questions for you. He goes, have you, have you felt, felt any chills? And the crew said, all said, yeah, I think so. And I said, okay, okay. Molly said, hey, sit down here. He goes, let's go downstairs and talk just for a minute or two. Can I have your time? And they all knew. They said, sure, Mr. Safer. And then they started clapping. They said, all right, Derek Morley. And they, and they, they treated me with disrespect and camaraderie at the same time. We sat around a a couple of sawhorses with a piece of wood on it. And they they poured me a co coffee out of those cool green giant uh, things. And they started talking about, uh, you know, ghosts and cat, you know, how once upon a time they had shot one of the Casper, live action Casper movies, the same set as, as you know, as a house you know, made for the old nuclear family shoots and, uh, you know, designed, you know, for that wholesome aspect of, uh, and then Morley said, oh, it's interesting now. He goes, because it's reborn with the Fuller House and and the kind of plot line we, me and Derek have a vague awareness of, but not really any details other than Candace and Kimmy. And yeah, I said, I know, well, I know the twins, they didn't sign in. I don't, I don't think they signed up for it, but, uh, I can't, I, you know, I don't have a, I don't have full callback of, uh, uh, was that Jody Sweeten was the other one? Well, Morley wrote that one down. J double question mark that would spanned, uh, two, two sets, uh, well, you know, I don't know what those are called, Oxford lines or whatever. And we just started asking, they asked, they started talking about Nickelodeon slime, getting slimed by Nickelodeon slime and giggling and just general. And they said, is any of it eerie? They said, no, e irritating. And that, that was some, somebody who said, and we all laughed. It was funny, actually. And Morley said, all right, well, he, said, he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, so they shot that Casper movie here. And then at a corner of my ear, I guess, I guess I'd be out of my ear because I don't know if my ear actually has any corners. Uh, but the corner of the room, I heard a creak, a back and forth creak of a rocking chair. And then I heard uh, the, uh, the clearing of a throat of a man, probably an old man named Vandy. And he said, it's a Purdue chicken you're looking for. Purdue chickens were all of it started. And Morley and I turned at the same time as partners are known to do. You know, they're tuned into each other. And Morley just raised his right hand and pushed the air back, excusing the rest of the crew. 
and they soundlessly left and we turned around in our chairs and we found ourselves looking across the room at a man named Vandy, old man Vandy. And I found myself, I, I was fully in method investigation because I stood up and I walked across the room and I said, you must be old man Vandy. I said, I'm Derek Bordley. We're here to ask you some questions, sir. And he said, my father was a sir. I'm an old man. And then he chuckled, morally chuckled, I chuckled. And I pulled a chair up close to Vandy. And I said, tell us more about this chicken, Vandy. And he said, it was the, uh, I think he, he said, he goes, let me, let me piece it back together. He said it was the cast and crew party celebrating the uh, close of the shoot. I, I don't know the terms of these things, but I'm sure they have a professional term, you know, like a cast party or whatever you have after a opening night or closing night of a play. And he still moved back and forth in his chair. He was rocking in a chair. It wasn't even a rocking chair. But he was so old man Vandy, it didn't even matter. But he said it was a Purdue chicken that started all the trouble. And I said, how'd you know it was a Purdue chicken? And he goes, well, that's who we hired. He goes, you know, those ones from the commercials. He goes, I've been on that shoot. He goes, I, I go, Casper? He goes, Casper too. Uh, the ghost with the most. And he said, didn't, didn't you write that, Derek? And I said, You're, I'm, in, I'm Derek Bordley, sir. No, I'm not a writer of Casper fan fiction and directed DVD movies. Like the wonderful uh, Casper 3, actually. Uh, ghost Overboard was what I, what I may have written. But not, no, not not too, no, no, Mr. Uh, old Man Vandy. Anyway, Derek Bordley here to ask you more questions. And Morley, Morley says, so there's a guy in a chicken suit. And he goes, two guys in a chicken suit. He goes, and they played the non-Purdue chickens, if you remember the commercials at all. And Morley said, I do. And I said, I totally, I said, I totally do. And I said, but there's no Purdue chicken in those because, they, I mean, the irony is the chickens wanted to be, but if they knew what they're in for, and Vandy cracked his knuckles. And he said, you're getting distracted from the point, son. And I said, all right, Vandy, clue me in. And he said, well, that was the thing. He goes, he goes, we only hired uh, the two chickens, but then there was a third one there. The Purdue chicken showed up. I said his name was Cruz Azul. And, you know, we, we just thought it was, was somebody. We said, what the heck, who, who is that? Billy, Jimmy, who's in that uh, chicken suit? And we were all having a great time, you know, because, uh, you know, Cas we knew we were going to be rich off Casper too. They said, what was, it t what was it called again? They said, you, are you still upset they didn't make Casper 3 Ghost Overboard? And he patted me on the head and winked. And they said, well, I guess I can't be a method investigator with everybody. And he said, he goes, the next thing we knew, you know, the party was rocking. And this Purdue chicken, Cruz Azul, was the, the, the life of the party. And he was pretending he was a South Carolina Democratic uh, senator, congressman, making speeches, pressing the flesh. And he goes, at some point, the two actors that were playing the, the non-Purdue chickens, they left, you know. And we said, where's your buddies? He said, oh, those aren't my friends. He goes, that was a couple of guys in chicken suits. And he goes, we had drank, drank a bit. And he goes, uh... He goes, and then the party went on and went on, and the chicken was still dancing and dancing with all the, all the crew and the cast, and we're all just having a great time, you know. And I guess I've been drawn in by this guy. And finally, Morley said, "Get to the point," and he, he put he, Morley bumped his fist on the table. Even he goes, "We need, we need, we we got to unsolve this mystery here." And you're just spinning me a web. And, it will, and he, goes, he goes, at some point, 
He goes in the middle of the party. He goes, somebody just got nervous and they said, Cruz is, oh, what? Because he said all of a sudden he started talking about Casper and how he's friends with Casper. And uh, that Casper was going to move on. I said, and then I said to Casper, three goes to overboard. And the uh, old man Vandy said, to, to, to a future project. And he goes, and then there was this, uh, the sound system went out, the dance lights went out. And they went off and they went back on and the chicken was still there. Uh, he goes, but it was only sitting in the chair. And he goes, then we heard a car pull out of the lot. And we went to unsuit the chicken, you know, make sure we said, uh, and he goes, uh, he goes, it was a, a seven foot stuffed chicken. And I said, a seven foot stuffed chicken suit. And he said, no, it was a seven foot doll. Or, you know, Lifefly Mannequin. He goes, there was no way anyone was inside that chicken. And he said, the other thing was, anytime anybody touched a chicken, they got a case of the giggles. And they said, it's mysterious. And he said, he goes, it was a mystery, but we stopped talking about it. And morally, he cleared his throat and he stood and he started to pace the room. Looking through his notepad, he said, this doesn't make any sense. None of this makes any sense at all. He said, you got a movie set used for a movie, Casper, Casper 2, Full House. And he said, was this used in the original Full House? And uh, Vandy said, majority of the interior stuff was. But, you know, we've redesigned it for a remodel for Fuller House. And Morley said, well, he goes, we still, he goes, still doesn't make any sense. He goes, you got a chicken suit, a moving chicken suit, uh, causing the giggles, causing fun, causing mystery. You got a missing card. The missing card would turn up. And the guy said it did. He said it was old, 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 old Foghorn Leghorn Jones's car. And he goes, they found the car. The only thing was the seatbelts were replaced by sheets. This is the first time I've ever heard Morley gasp. It would probably be the last time I've heard Morley gasp. And Morley said, now we're getting somewhere. And he goes, who is this man? Foghorn Leghorn Jones? He goes, where do we find him? And Vandy said, you don't. He's not with us anymore. And Morley said, well, there's your sheep belts, Derek. And I said, you're right, Morley, but we still don't have anything that makes any comprehensible sense related to why any of this is going on or how we're going to resolve the case or if there's even a case that needs to be resolved. And he said, Vandy, that's my partner, Derek Morley. And I got the chills. And for me, the case was I already saw. I said I could care less about it. I mean, in my head, I was like, I mean, if only... And he said, well, I guess I've learned to live now because I get the chills. Because morally, I just called a character I was playing, being, trying to be myself, but realizing if I played a character uh, more pleasing to morally, he might, you know, that. So, uh, you know, said, hey, I can't have the dream. Of it. But I said, yeah, I get the chills because morally said I was his partner, but he didn't really mean it because it's not really me. But, but I said, we're on the case now. Instead of saying all that stuff going through my head, Morley said, let's go, Derek. I think I got an idea of what's going on. And I said, well, I, I don't. And Morley said, well, don't worry. I, 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 and he said, let's go upstairs. He goes, this place got an attic, Vandy? Vandy said, of course it does. It's got two attics. Morley said, that's even better. And he goes, now I really know what's happening. And we headed upstairs and, and uh, you know, to, out of the basement. I guess that's up to the ground floor. Then we headed up to the second floor. And I said, wait a second, where is uh, John Stamos's room? I said, who lives in the ba basement, Morley? Uh, John Stamos or Dave Coulier? And Morley said, to the attic, Derek. And then we went up to the third floor. You see, yeah, they think they did have three, four. I, I said, that would be a dream of mine, Morley, to live in a house with three floors. 
and Morley said to me, don't give up on Kimmy. And then I, then I got the chills again, but for a whole different reason. And I said, but she's probably, and that's, that's a character there. Uh, and then I was like, whoop, I said, Morley. And then he laughed and I said, oh my goodness, Morley. And then we went up another floor to technically what would be the fourth floor, but what was actually the first attic. And I said, what do you think, Morley? And Morley said, I think, uh, I think we got a case of a confused mother ghost. And she, he said, she, he said, I'm going to need you to act, uh, Derek. And he said, do you know how to act? Can you become a character? And I said, I could try, Morley. And he, he, he pulled a sheet off of a piece of furniture. He threw it over me. He said, get on your knees. And I, you know, if Morley Safer says that to you, say, I oh, got, you got it. And he said, you're Casper now. Act like a little, you know, but he goes to get Casper down. And he goes, don't do the freaking, you know, silly new, new age attitude, you know. And I said, I'm Casper. I said, okay, Papa Morley. Boo. And Morley said, oh, Casper. And then. I, I said, I think I, I think I know what it was. And then we heard a, we heard, we heard a noise above our heads, uh, a calming lullaby noise. And I said, Morley Poo, Morley Poo, I love you. And the Morley gave me a cut it like it was too weird. And I, you know, but I said, I, I'm in the, the, I'm in the Casper, baby Casper zone. And then Morley started acting. He said, who are you? And I said, I'm Casper. And he said, what are you doing in my, uh, you know, my, my, my family's, my kid's family? You know, this is the full, our house is already full. And I said, well, I, I just uh, stopped by. I'm looking for my mommy. And Morley winked at me like I was doing a good job. Like Derek Morley was on the case pretending Scooter Andrew was being Scooter, being Derek Borley, being Casper on the case. Crack, crack, amateur reporter or investigator. Uh, Casper Poo. And Morley said, well, if Casper, have you been playing around with, with people and clowning around and pretending you were a giant chicken? And then I said, well, I just wanted to dance at the party. It was so fun. And Morley said, well, I think your mother's been looking for you for a long time. Uh, you know, for a very long time. Uh, do, do you know anything about that? Can you remember anything about that, Casper? And I said, well, I just love to laugh and I love people. And I know my mama loves people, too. We're silly ghosts. We love to make people laugh. And Morley, Morley just nodded, uh, like, go on. And I said, well, yeah, I said, yeah, I, I said, I, I think me and my mom are supposed to move away because it's so busy here with all the people filming and things. You know, sometimes my mom, my mama's eyes aren't so good because she can't tell if I even have my seatbelt in a car. And so sometimes she gets mixed up and thinks that, uh, uh, but, you know, when you do know what a blue screen is, my, my mama doesn't, but I do. And Morley nodded, and, and we started walking towards the stairs to the next attic. And Morley said, oh, oh, what did your mom get me? And I said, well, sometimes she thinks a green screen ghost, because she could see it in her mind, uh, is me. And then Morley said, you know, gave me the nod to go upstairs. And I said, wait a second, I'm at friggin'. I, I said, well, didn't we just figure out to, ca I think I was thinking that, but when Morley Safer nods, you did go somewhere, you could, you know, we believe me, you do it. So I started heading up the stairs and I said, well, I don't know if this is the best idea, but uh, here we go. And then I, I, I st took two steps up the uh, stairs. I heard the mother ghost and the most cheerful, well, I assumed it was the mother. She said, oh, Casper, is that you? And something, my inner Derek Bordley, actually, in the back of my mind said, you're not acting like Derek Bordley, Bordley. 
And I stopped and I turned around morally. And he looked at me and he was taking notes even. And I said, well, see, he's already writing a story about this. And I said, morally. And he said, D -d -d Casper. And I pulled the sheet off me. And I said, no, it's Derek, Derek Bordley. And I could have sworn Morley was about to crack up, but I think it was because my knees were covered in dust. And he said, aren't you going to co close the case, Derek? And I said, well, I got a strange feeling. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to be cradled by a mother ghost. And then she's going to put me in a car and make sure, and then I'm going to tell her the joke. And then that'll solve the case, but then I'll be on, uh, stuck in a car with a ghost. And I'm not really pre prepared for that because I'm Derek Bordley morally. And I'm not ready to give up my gum, you know, sugar. I didn't do that because I was being Derek Bordley. And Morley said, well, what are we going to do, Derek? How are we going to close the case? And I said, I got a case. I got to close this case like right where it started, Morley. And he said, tell, tell me where the case started, Derek. And I said, remember, I told that joke to a man who may or may not have been Denny. And he was either a weatherman or a, uh, a tra you know, he was, the, he was the goofy guy at the station, the comic relief. But he had a sidekick that made of wood or plastic and, 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 and and he said, it's not a marionette. He goes, it's a ventriloquist dummy. And he goes, you're brilliant, Derek. And, he, and then I said, and the ghost has been up there for years. So I said, we could probably take it. He said, let's go, let's hit the road. And then, you know, this is, I guess it's a little bit anticlimactic because then we drove and we had to go to so many stores before we found a ventriloquist dummy. And I think the station was does WSTM 5. Uh, but I don't think there was a station WSTM, so because Syracuse was, isn't that west of the Mississippi, KPIX is K, and east, and that never made sense to me either. East of the Mississippi, you search with W's. WSTM, maybe it was WSTM 5. But anyway, we finally, we, we you know, because Florida, there's uh, Goodwill stores and rescue, you know, a lot of, retirees are good and so we finally tracked down a good one and then we brought it back to the fuller house house set and we went back up to the attic and then we went up to the i say headed up the stairs using my casper voice oh mom are we ready to get in the car should i go wait for you in the car i'll be sure to fasten my sheet belt Morley and I were like, well, and they said, Kimmy's car. Come on, Morley, whose car will we have to go steal? And Morley said, Derek, did you have a good, good crush fear of Kimmy? He said, I did. I don't I don't know anymore, though. Uh, you know, I don't think I'll be. And I said, Derek Morley's fears are bored, boredly. He said, let's get this ghost on the road. And we put the mannequin, you know, the mannequin ghost in there. And in, in that actress's car, you know, maybe. And we headed off and the car vanished. The mannequin vanished. And I guess, it is, uh, I guess, all, I unfortunately, we ran into old man Vandy and he had to quit. You know, nine weeks later, he said, well, the joy's gone from that set. And I said, the joy is gone from the Fuller House house set. And he said, yeah, it was those ghosts. And I said, ghost. And then he said, ghosts. And then I said, he said, well, and I said, is that another case for Bordley and Morley and Bordley? Bordley and Morley, Bordley. Bordley and Derek Bordley, not Derek. I got my name mixed up there because I was so into the case. And Morley patted him. He said, I'm taking you off decaf, Derek. And that was it. You know, we, we, I guess we, uh, hopefully everything works out for the Fuller House that we didn't ruin or, you know, we didn't suck all the joy out of the area for the reshoots for Ghostbusters remake, Fuller House remake. Probably doesn't bode well for my fan fiction, uh, Ghost Overboard, Casper 3. Oh, I think Casper 2 is Ghost with the most. 
and maybe, you know, Casper for Professor Casper. I don't, that's a working title, but uh, it goes overboard. You know, that takes place. I, I started pitching morally as we go and you got some lunch. And then I realized Derek wouldn't do that, but I was already mid pitch telling him about the big scene with Casper. And, you know, because it takes place on a cruise ship, obviously goes overboard. I'll just spoil it for you, you know, to wind you down is that, uh, well, there's a big uh, action sequence during the Broadway show because Casper decides that Casper wants to be in the uh, Broadway show. And also there's a probably, I'd say you got to work in another, you know, beep plot line that maybe, I'm thinking Jewel Thief probably. That would maybe that'd be a C plot line. Uh, but the one twist is that ghost is actually, well, now I'm thinking that maybe there's a triple ghost, like the, the, the jewel thief is trying to get the ghost diamond. There you go. That's definitely a C plot. Uh, the, there's a dog named ghost. That's who goes overboard, maybe with the diamond in its teeth or around its neck if it's a diamond necklace. Uh, but they go, you know, that's the dog that, uh, the little girl that, you know, probably had, you know, something, hard, you know, that will pull it to heart strings. Uh, but Ghost, you know, Ghost is her best friend and can track, you know, knows where Casper is. So then when Casper's on the Broadway stage, Ghost goes on the stage. The girl's family is like, that's it. That was the last thing with your dog, where, you know. And then, you know, the crew, you know, she's been hiding the dog the whole time. That ghost, the ghost, you got to be like a ghost. Probably a sequence where Casper tries to teach the dog. Morley fell asleep at this point in, in his soup. Luckily, it had gotten cold because I'd been talking so long. Um, Yeah, so C Casper teaches ghost how to be a ghost. And then, you know, but then, then once it ends up, the woman whose diamond was stolen owns the cruise line. So uh, that's it. That was the movie. Uh, Caster 3, Ghost Overboard. In, in, uh, you know, Netflix, hey, how about it? Uh, you know, I have no rights to any of it. And it probably was, that's probably been a plot of about 14 movies, but... Uh, you know, so that is how Morley and Borley back in the case. And then I, I, I tried to cradle Morley, but he, he pushed me, you know, he said, no, Derek. And, and he, then he rolled his head over into a salt. I made him, and then I pushed more saltine crackers. I made him a little saltine cracker and wrapper pillow. And then I, you know, left him a message. And I just said, uh, thanks for another great case, Derek. DB, actually, I think maybe I just called myself DB. But, uh, yeah, that's another case, Morley and Borley. Uh, professional, you know, Morley is this professional. Or I guess he's retired, but, well, that wasn't, I mean, obviously that was, a, that was an awesome case, so that's not retired. All right, uh, good night. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots, uh, and I just wanted to tell you that this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And, you know, life can be overwhelming, and many people get burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include a lack of motivation, feeling helpless, trapped. You could have be feeling detached, dealing with fatigue, and more. And I know that comes up for me, feeling helpless, uh, feeling like there's too many things to do, that I'm never going to get caught back up. Uh, and that's when I start to feel the detachment, the fatigue, and the more. And that's why I'm so glad I go to therapy every single week that I have that time scheduled and set aside for me. Uh, you know, we associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feeling burned out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Uh, talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. And like I said, when I go to my therapist, I can talk about it because they're there for me. They're there to help me work through things. They're there to listen and help me find the tools I need and to put things in perspective. And when people tell me what they're going through, what's burning them out, therapy is always an option. I say, hey, check out BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy. 
that offers a video phone and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try. Sleep With Me listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Sleep With Me. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Sleep With Me. Thanks, everybody.